Murr, we want you to block your side of your fat face. Go ahead. Yeah. Go in slow. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's better than a good laugh? A good laugh that's also a bit of a prank. And that's exactly what James Murray from Impractical Jokers is all about. He's one of the four hilarious pranksters who push the limits of what's possible, and let's just say the results are often outrageous. Well, Impractical Jokers is not an ordinary prank show. What sets it apart is its witty humor and genuine reactions from both the targets and the jokers. Besides the show's popularity, Murray has become a fan favorite for his quick wit. His clever comebacks and willingness to go the extra mile for a laugh can make anyone's sides hurt. But there is a twist. While the show completed nine seasons successfully, something went wrong in the tenth one. What could it be? Did Murray go too far with his outrageous stunts, or did the show take a turn for the worse? Well, let's dive in and find out what really happened to James Murray from Impractical Jokers. Dad, did you ever imagine you would have a 40-year-old son who slept with a blankie? Did you ever imagine that you would have a 40-year-old son who sleeps with a blankie? Maybe a pink blankie. <laughs> Murray is the hilarious antic on the show, but he's much more than just his on-screen persona. There are many untold truths behind the prankster Murr. He was born on 22nd of January 1975. His great-grandfather, Richard Hoolins Murray, was a scientist who invented the reflecting lens, so it's thought that James would pursue his legacy. However, the young guy studied film. He started his career with both television and films, including a comedy series, Roger Roger, miniseries, other people's children and sons and lovers, nailing Vienna, and 20 things to do before you're 30. Well, James Murray is not just any comedian. In fact, he's one of the funniest and most talented comedians in the US. Alongside his hilarious friends Brian Quinn and Sal Volcano, he came up with the idea for one of the biggest TV hits, The Impractical Jokers. These guys didn't just come up with the idea, they also came forward to pitch it and turn it into the blockbuster that the world loves. With their quick wit, outrageous pranks, and hilarious banter, James, Brian, and Sal became household names in no time and brought laughter to millions of fans worldwide. Murray was not born a comedian. In fact, after his studies, he was a development executive at North South Dress Productions. But he had a spark of comedy that came to life when he met his three high school friends. Murr was pranked in front of his childhood crush, Danica McKellar, who played Winnie Cooper on the Wonder Years TV show. He lost a game and was punished for participating in a bodybuilding competition. So, he was supposed to wear a thong and cover himself with a tanning lotion. But his friends tricked him into thinking he was performing in front of professional bodybuilders. However, in reality, he was going to perform in front of Danica. It left him feeling totally crushed. But there's a silver lining to this awkward situation, and the humiliating prank led to a beautiful friendship between Murr and Danica. Beyond impractical jokers, he has a multi-talented personality and a fascinating married life. He's been an author for years and debuted with the novel Awakened, which never came to the surface until Impractical Jokers became a hit. Jokes apart, he's been sending his books to Sunday Times and Publishers Weekly bestseller lists. And that's not all, his creativity has spawned two sequels to his novel Awakened, and he joined hands with Darren Warmoth to co-author five more. His literary adventures have earned him a whole new following. And besides this, he himself wrote and directed a film named Damned, based on the return of Jesus in the 21st century that was a blockbuster too. In addition to his television works, Murr has dipped his toes into politics and had a short-lived career in Congress. Since the first season of Impractical Jokers, the four pranksters have entertained millions by not sparing anyone crossing their path. The masterminds Brian, Murray, Joe and Sal behind this light-hearted reality show always have the joke on themselves. Actually, the show features a hidden camera and microphone that play off the reactions of people. But the target of all pranks is the jokers themselves. One or more of them is sent into the world with an earpiece and the rest give weird instructions. The one who fails, refuses or can't measure up to the prank will be punished hilariously and that's the beauty of the show. The shenanigans of the show are hilarious and most of them sound impractical to the public, but they're absolutely real. 
Murray's journey from season 1 to 10 is full of hilarious pranks that he himself enjoyed along with his audience and fans. Once, Sal lost a challenge and was given the punishment of watching his sister Jenna Volcano marry Mur on the sets along with his friends and family. So Jenna and Mur got married, but the marriage was quickly annulled after their honeymoon night. Later, Mur tweeted to confirm that he legally married Sal's sister for the show. It was a crazy prank that went above and beyond the usual monkey shines on the show. In another hilarious yet cringe-worthy episode, Mur was punished for losing the challenge. As part of the punishment, he got shots of Novocaine while talking about exotic foods. Despite the hilarity of the punishment, it was not really a funny experience for him. Later, Mur revealed in a tweet that the treatment could have long-lasting implications and could complicate the dental surgeries that he might get in the future. The 2018 episode of Impractical Jokers nearly killed Mur. The pranksters visited a budget department store to cause trouble. They sent Mur to pick out clothes and annoy other shoppers by reaching over them to grab items. The rest of the three watched him from a monitor and decided to target a man who was much larger than Mur. They thought it'd be funny to provoke him and see how he would react. Mur followed their instructions and climbed over the man to grab a shirt in a different size. When Mur picked up a bra, the jokers told him to ask the man to try it on. However, before the man realizes what's going on, he confronts Mur. He flicked Mur's face and chased after him until a security guard interfered and prevented a physical quarrel. Last but not least, what he enjoyed the most was the high five day. Q and Sal challenge Murray and Joe to ask people for high fives, and if they refuse, both of them will remove one article from their clothing. The challenge got hilarious when people refused to give them high fives, forcing Murr and Joe to remove more and more clothes. Joe was the first to lose both his shirts and pants, but at last, both were left in underwear. The saddest day for Impractical Jokers fans was when Joe Gatto announced his departure in an Instagram post. Joe got separated from his wife, Bessie Gatto, and had to co-parent his two kids. He said goodbye to his fans with a new hope that he would make a comeback with other ways to entertain them. Murray was not happy with that, and along with two other jokers, he confirmed the news and announced that the show would continue without Joe. He would be replaced when the production of the next season started. Moreover, the joker James Murray confirmed no bad blood between Joe and the group. When Joe left, everyone thought it would become challenging for them to run the show. But fortunately, the new format of Impractical Jokers is nothing less than fun. Murray revealed in an Instagram post that celebrity guests would fill the spot of Joe every week and the punishments would involve them too. So the fans can expect something weirder in the show now than in the past. While Joe left season 9 for his family, Murray brought in celebs like Eric Andre, Rob Riggle and Brooke Shields, who were funny in their own ways. However, this time his plan didn't work out well, because most of the celebrities didn't really fit into the show like Joe did. The humiliations they came up with were mostly physically abusive, which was out of line with the show's usual style of punishment. Murray himself didn't seem that he has enjoyed the season much except in one episode when the punishment style was a bit different and funny. Murr had to sit at the bar while someone wrote inappropriate notes for him to pass to the customers. Brett Michaels and Paul Rudd made the punishment even more hilarious with their presence. Despite Joe leaving the show, Murray and the company have managed it well to keep it entertaining and humorous at the same time. Though it seems like it's not gaining as many fans as the previous seasons got, but the fans could keep their fingers crossed because Murray is already here to use his charm to bring the wittiness of the show back.